Afternoon all, Pedge Boychi, fitness expert, ex-professional footballer, love an entrepreneur life and love storytelling. But today's conversation is going to be all around football, sports in general as well. But my background is a professional athlete in football for over 15 years. I've had the privilege of playing 250 plus professional games both in Australia and the UK. So I've been around the woods a bit, you know, lots of ups and downs, understanding career choices and paths and playing at high levels. So the topic today is to all you footballers out there, the question is, are you good enough to become the next professional footballer? Now, that's a big question to answer, and this is for anyone from a 10-year-old kid right up until an 18, 21-year-old who's on the verge of maybe cracking that next level into professional sport. Um, it's, it's a big question because there's a lot of things around where I've seen influences in a wrong way where people assume that they're ready to go to the next step when they're not, or they've got the foundations right from a very young age. Um, I've trained many kids over the last few years, um, probably 200 plus kids, and I've always seen a, a similar theme across, whether it's parents, coaches, influential friends, around the theme of the next professional sport player. My kid's good enough. Is he good enough? He's the next best thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's very hard to know from a young age if you're going to be the next best thing. I mean, I think... You know, I've, I've seen more than 200 kids without coaching as well. So out of all the kids I've seen from, you know, that young age, I think there's a handful that I've seen that are those special gifted players. And those special gifted players are, you know, from five to 10 of them, really, out of hundreds. And again, those five to 10 aren't guaranteed to make it to the next level. The only thing they have of an advantage from such a young age, that special gift, is that they're already two, three steps ahead of the rest. Now, that's down to them to continue being two steps ahead while they're getting older and hitting that peak 16, 17 year old age before they crack the big time to see if they're still the special one. Otherwise, you have the ones that are the late bloomers that develop really late and then crack on to have a great professional career where the other ones just fall off and you never hear them again. And I still say this, the saddest story you can never hear from someone is a wasted talent. That, that's a really sad story because you mean you've got the goods and you've let it go. Um, now, whether you personally let it go yourself or the foundations around you are the wrong influences, which can be major factors, and, and that's something I'm going to touch on today. Um, so, all you kids out there, you know, you got to ask yourself, am I good enough? Is this what I really want? Now, really wanting something, that's a big emotional question. What I mean by that is, you know, if we could strip back all the freaking computer FIFA games out there, take away all the social medias of, you know, giving yourself this profile of I'm a superstar, um, looking away from all the best players in the world on TV and being mesmerized by that, back to the true self, is this what you really want? Now, if it's really what you want, do you have a bit of an understanding around what it takes to then get what you want? That's the next step. That's the hardest part. Now, the physical side of football and understanding how to play or the skills, that's not the hard part to learn. You, you will learn that with through trade and you know, hopefully by the corrective coaching, um, how to play the game. But if your mind isn't there or you, you don't have that mentality, strength to want to succeed and push through obstacles, you're not gonna you're not gonna make it. And if you don't correct the right tools from a young age, you're gonna hit a certain stage where you're required to step up and you can't because you don't know how to. And I've actually started to see that lately in older ages um, around semi-professional footballers where I've started to watch a fair few games. And I'm now connecting the two trends between young footballers I used to train and now the 21, 22 year olds where you know, you can see they've got something together, but they're lacking the few basic foundations which they never got taught from a young age or opened their eyes to wanting to learn because they're used to doing the same things over and over and getting away with it. Problem getting away with it, it's always going to catch up one day and it's going to bite you in the ass. Then you're going to ask the question, why me? You know, that person, why is he? He's not good enough to be there. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe not, but I think people deserve to be where they are based on hard work. Yeah, there's luck involved, but I do think... Um, Luck's created through hard work, dedication, and all the sacrifices being made. 
people see some people strive um, at heights that are great and they don't question why they're being but when they see someone who they think shouldn't be there and they should they think oh I should be there but you don't really know what that person's doing themselves to stay there they, they might be doing such extra work that you don't even do yourself and that's why they deserve it and, and, and people believe in that person more than you um, so to the young ones out there uh, back on that theme of am I good enough um, there's a lot of pressure around these youngsters that it's do or die at the ages of 10 to 14, 15 maybe, where if you don't make it into this team, that's it, it's over. Um, not necessarily. I mean, some people go through the pathway perfect and make to the top. Some people never even hear of for six, seven years and then they come out. Um, so timing's important too, but you gotta be good at what you do. And in the younger ones, Again, there's this fascination about being in the best team, um, having the wrong influences around you by being the superstar of the team when, in fact, the team around you isn't as good as you, so therefore you stand out, but really is actually not pushing you along. It's holding you back. So why not go with the team that's got another 10 players like you and see if you actually stand out? That's a good challenge. Um, I'm always a big believer of playing up an age, huge believer of playing up an age. I think if you're good enough, and you're dominating your age, move up. Um, it's something that kind of resonated with me from being young as well, and I think maybe that's an old school system where the better ones will tend to play up and compete with older people. Because um, you see 17 year olds make their debut playing against men. I don't see the problem there at all. If you can handle, why not? Um, but again, playing up an age doesn't mean that you're gonna still make it too. So knowing your true self-worth as a player, um, are you really focusing on what you're good at? Do you really know your best position? Do you really know what your strengths are? And when every time I meet a new kid that I train, I always ask, the first question I ask, what's your weaknesses? Tell me your weakness, what aren't you good at? I don't care about the positives because I wanna look at what we can fix to make the positives look better. And without fail, every single person can't give you more than three things that they're not good at because they've decided to ignore that and focus on what they think they're good at. Um, which is fine, I, I understand that completely because uh, as humans, we don't like to talk down about ourselves. We want to make ourselves look good. Um, which is great, but if you're ignoring what you need to work at, that's going to be the downfall that's going to hold you back as a footballer progressing to the next step. Um, we've all been a victim of it, trust me. I've gone through it myself many times through my career, my junior career, um, where you start to ignore things. It's, it's normal to do. But if you can open up to it and see what you're really great at and what can I improve on, you're going to have a great, better toolbox to achieve those things along the way. Because when you get older, you won't have those sticking points where, crap, if I just understood what I needed to work out from when I was younger, I wouldn't be in this situation now and I'll just flow through it and I'll be fine. So that's the next thing too. So you gotta understand your true capacity as a footballer. And I know there's these, this thing in that, you know, the, and it's not about um, what I believe in, what systems work or whatnot. Um, but I do think it's important. Yeah, it's good to understand positions from a young age to learn it. But I truly do believe if you know your own position, stick to it. Do not compromise your position for anything to be, oh, I'm gonna fill in for this position this week, no. I truly, again, so I truly do believe if you're good at one position or you know that's you, stick to it. If you have to move teams for it to play your own position, do it because it's only going to progress. You're only going to make it natural. You're going to be that player in that position. You're not going to be, oh, there's that utility player. You know, he's a good player. You know, that's, for instance, John. John's that number 10. John's that center back. Know your position early, quick as you can. Um, that would be my best advice regarding that. Only then can you progress and really master your position. Instead of chopping and changing week to week, because it, it's a great feeling playing week to week in different positions, but at the same day, you're not really making it a natural situation where, i.e., if you're playing number six and you're naturally receiving a ball back to play, and then next week you're going to right wing where you've got to receive the ball on the wing facing forward. It's a different mechanism altogether to a center back, to a left fullback. It all changes. Um, and I know that myself through my career where. You can have all the right prep and confidence going into a position that you want to play well, but it's not your natural. You actually don't know how it's going to end up going. 
versus when you know your position, yeah, you might not have a good game. That's You're never going to have a perfect match every single week. But knowing the confidence of knowing your role and what to do and how to play it is a far difference to then like, oh, crap, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. So know your position, I would say that big time. Um, then, you know, but the, the question is too around young kids' um, attitudes. And what I mean by their attitudes is I, I'm a big believer. I don't think anyone has a bad attitude. I really don't. I know when coaches say, oh, you know, he's got a bad attitude or he's not, you know, he's decent. I don't, I don't think, I think that's wrong. I think every young kid has a great attitude. Some people do it in ways that they think is right to express themselves and to come across negatively or bad, you know, if there's an angry kid always or frustrated, you know, he's probably down on himself and he needs probably help to articulate things better and see what's wrong with him. Um, I'm a big believer of that and I think communication is important. I don't think there's enough between uh, kid, coach, parent together. You know, there's a lot of uh, coach, parent or coach, kid and then there's a diluted miss messages then goes back between the two parties. I think it's important to have a collective understanding. Um, only then can you progress. I don't think there's enough of that. Um, and, and I don't think there's enough... I don't think there's enough of real realistic... How do I say without... Mm, I don't think there's enough realism in the world today of, of young footballers to give them the real hardcore truth. I think it's important to to teach kids the real truth around what they're doing. I don't think... Look, there's times obviously when it can come across negative and wrong. And, and look, we always sometimes do things in a good tension when it comes across wrong. Like, again, we all make mistakes. Um, that's that's part of life. We get that. But I don't think sugarcoating is, is a good foundation for youngsters. It's only going to set them up to fail when they're older. And... I think they're a bit protected today and, you know, they want to upset the parent or if, you know, this parent's got sponsorship in the club so he's, he's got to play or, you know, he doesn't want to hear the truth. What good is that when the kid's older and then he's going to be 17 and then his old dream is just crashed because he thought he was the next superstar because he didn't have the right tools in the place because he was misled along the way with the wrong information from, I if it's a coach, parent, family member friend whatever it may be um and i've seen this a lot and and people that do know me will know that i'm very real and honest and i'll never lie to, i will never lie to a kid or or anyone because it's not about me or you know i'm i have an opinion so does that but everyone has an opinion and there's no right or wrong opinion but if you're trusting that one person you got to allow that person to articulate what they feel and what they think the kid needs to improve on um whether it's me or someone else, there's no right or wrong. But if you're sugarcoating because you don't want to offend someone, I think that's completely wrong. Um, it's not fair at all on the kid or anyone. You're wasting people's time. You're wasting your own time. And therefore, you're not going to then do the real thing. If you know, if you give someone who, say, a right footer and you think his right foot's 10 out of 10, do you think he's going to work on his right foot correctly to improve? Or, you know, say he opens up correctly on the right side, to receive the ball perfectly 10 out of 10, but you, you don't really focus on, on the other aspect to open up on the right side because it can't, you know, there's a few ways to open up on your right side. So if you don't articulate those situations with the concern of what you need to improve, that person will think is 10 out of 10. And then when it comes to a situation in a game where he needs to then use that other factor of opening up, I'm just giving an example without going into detail, he's going to get stomped out by the opposition and then be like hit from a wall and think, what the hell's going on? This used to work all the time because you've been sugarcoated and you haven't been shown corrective ways. Now, how do you know if you've been shown or not shown? That's another thing too. So this is where it comes down to good support and good mentors around you to help articulate your situation. And, you know, the information is important. Now, if you're not exposed to information, it's hard because, you know, you're trusting what you see in front of you. Now, there's a lot of people out there that genuinely want to help and improve people and that they're amazing people and I know some of them myself and they're doing a great job. You know, and there's some people doing it to, you know, better themselves, which is not a good thing because it's letting other people down. Um, I just think you need to really fine tune about what you are as a player and what you need to improve on as well. 
And you've got to ask that question, is this what I really want? You know, is it, is it worth, I know it's as stupid as it is, but is it really worth playing a freaking computer game a night before a game or on a day of a game and stressing yourself out because you think it's cool to play this game and then you lose and you're feeling depressed about this game going to a soccer game and playing crap. And then people think, oh, you play crap, but they don't realize that you played this stupid computer game that distracted you from what was really important. Now, I'm not saying you can't be a kid or have fun. Not at all. We're all, you got to have fun in life. But the question is, is, if what you really want, can you not sacrifice maybe three hours of a computer game before a game just to, you know, make sure you can perform the best that you can? Play a computer game during a week, earlier or whatever it is. Don't take it away. But the question is then is, um, are you actually, sorry, my blinds have just gone up. Um, okay, it's a bit bright. Um, can you then change up your mentality for prep and knowing what to do for that? Because if you're not preparing correctly, it's just going to be a snowball effect and then you're going to not play well and then you're going to have an inconsistent pattern of where you're not performing at the best that you can. And I've seen that happen a lot. You know, I've gone through it all uh, myself in my career. You know, sometimes it, it's a momentum thing. Sometimes momentum is very hard to control. I think there's no science behind momentum change. Um, sometimes it can just whip you or sometimes it can just push you forward. Um, that's part of life. And my question then is, you know, are you eating right as well before the game? Are you doing the right training, rehab, prehab? Now, this sounds like a professional mentality. It's, it is, but at the same time, it's just basic stuff that you can do more of. I mean, you really train in the hardest that you can. I hear, the, the story that I always hear, yes, I'm doing extras. I'm like, okay, what are your extras? You know, I go to the park and I kick the ball against the wall. I'm like, okay, great. Um, how are you kicking it? Just kicking it, bouncing against the wall. Okay, is it functional to the sport you're playing? I'm like, I don't know. Okay, what position are you playing? I am a center back and I'm like, okay, so how are you kicking the ball against the wall? Because I'm shooting. Okay, I don't know why center backs need to shoot the ball against the wall. Why can't a center back, you know, do some placement theoretical play around thinking they're passing it to a number six or an eight against the wall and get into a habit that's functional versus the hour and a half of shooting where they could do maybe half an hour of functional training towards their position that they're playing to improve. That's smart training um you know someone says they want to juggle a thousand times that's great but i mean you can juggle a thousand times but can you actually play the game that's another question too you gotta ask yourself i mean i'm not a great uh, juggler myself um you know my excuse i'm a defender so you know my main job is to defend so i don't have to juggle that's my excuse um because i probably can't juggle and dribbling is another thing that i'm terrible at even though i can i've played at a high level um Defends my first thing, but you know, it's just dribbling is not my strength, and I try and avoid it with you know being fit, knowing how to pass, run, tackle. Um, there's ways around knowing. That's another thing. Knowing your weaknesses is very important to avoid being stuck in that situation. Knowing your weaknesses and knowing the strengths to help your weaknesses is very important as well. So it's all about balancing them together and moving forward, not having one high and one low. Um, so the question that back to that is how can you prep right? A lot of things you got to look at. You know, I mean, look. Sometimes people don't have the perfect life. I get that. You know, parents obviously work. They sometimes can't get there, and the kid has to get a lift or whatever. I understand all of that. That's that's not an issue that I'm raising here. Um, I just want to make sure that the kids and teenagers are, are doing the best that they can for themselves to improve. Um, and and you know, and you've got to try and stay. Humble as much as you can. I mean, look, confidence, bragging, cockiness. I think if it's coming from a good place, if because I think confidence is very important. And cockiness from a position of confidence is very good. Not arrogance, not at all. I mean, I think people confuse the two. Arrogance is a very bad trait to have, um, and it's very shown in sport. If you don't have respect towards yourself, you're going to have no respect to the opposition. Therefore, you're going to let yourself down as well as the team. Um, so you've got to make sure that your confidence is pure and it's coming from within and not from out. And, you know, don't try and search for external validation. I mean, like I know these social media presence today around having cool photos and, 
you know, what you do in your backyard and all that, that that's great. Um, it's good to do so because you want to build confidence, but make sure it's coming from an inner self-worth of confidence for yourself, knowing that you're good enough. Because if you do that, then that's fine. Um, you're going to progress and you keep going forward and having the right tools in place. But if you're doing it for the wrong reasons to try and showcase that you're, look at me, I'm, I'm a great player, it's not going to work. And, you know, people will see through that as you get older as well, and then you're going to get stuck. Um, so if you, you're faced with a lot of challenges around that, um, which is quite common, it's normal, because um, it's not easy becoming a professional, I, I'd tell you that now. Um, no one in any sport or any career in life that you choose, you've got to put in the hard work, the dedication, the sacrifices day in, day out. Now, do you do it from a 10-year-old point of view or do you do it from a 15-year point of view? I think everyone's different. I mean, you know, there's no rule right or wrong, but I mean... It's a fine line to know when is it to go full throttle, when it's not, because you know you, you're playing a high risk game as well. You know there's there's factors around school and study which is important to do. You can't ignore those factors. I know some people say you can't do both or you got to choose one or the other. Uh, I don't think that's the case. I think if your mind's right and it's set and it's focused on what it needs to get done, it will happen when it needs to. Um, everyone's time is different. It doesn't have to happen at this age or you know, he has to go overseas or he has to play at this age, first grade or whatever. No, it's not always the case. Um, you know, there's there's a few players that you hear about, I won't mention names, about where they've said that this player isn't good enough to play pro and this player is good to play pro. And what happens in a couple of years' time, the one that wasn't good enough is playing, the one that was meant to be there isn't. So you, just because one person knocks you back doesn't mean that it's over. And I think... You need to understand to get used to the word of a knockback or a setback and understand it and really conquer that. If you can overcome the idea of um, conquering setbacks, you're going to have a strong mindset that's going to set you up and keep driving you forward. Trust me on that. So many times, you know, people don't make this team from a young age because of whatever reason, and then the next year, they still don't make it. That's two years in a row, there's massive setbacks, and that's gonna hurt, it's gonna have pain. But if you can turn that pain into a positive and strength, and in two, three years time, you might make that next step higher than someone else. Then that's your challenge to you, and that's what you've just conquered, which is great. Or you know what, it may be, it might not even be in this sport, it might be something else that you can take away with you, but don't let it defeat you. You have to conquer it, you have to rise above it and be better than it. And don't think, just because your friend made it and you didn't, that it's over. Stop comparing yourself to others. You can only compare yourself to yourself and that's that. No one else. It's you alone in this world and in this sport. You can't compete and look at others for validation. Don't worry about it. It's not important one bit. What's the most important is your own self-worth and what you truly believe in and what you're going to get out of it. Um, so to wrap all that up, my question to all you footballers out there, if you're feeling in a situation where you're stuck or you don't really know what you're good at, or is this what I really want, please drop me some comments or you know, inbox me at my socials on Instas or Facebook or whatever it is that you have a question, please ask. Um, I'd love to have a conversation back and forth about how we can help each other. Um, I'd love to hear some of your stories as well. Um, doesn't matter what age you are because we all have them and I think that's a great way of connecting with people. It's good storytelling and the more we can do, the better it is and the more you can uh, you know, improve as a person. Thanks guys for watching.